line here. What a punt from Anthony Barella. He ties the lead all square with Eagle McMahon through 13 holes. Likely be a drop in for par, and he can close out his first ever major. Oh my goodness, Final, what just happened on 16? Welcome back to the continuation of round one coverage of the 2023 Finnish National Disc Golf Championships. We are here at Mukula Disc Golf Park and we have an incredible card full of very talented Finnish players bringing you some incredible action. This is round one back nine MPO feature card coverage brought to you by MDG Media. I'm Connor Wood and with me Finnish superstar Elias Lukanen. What is up, Connor? What is up, viewers? Let's have a look at this back nine. We saw some hot scores on the front nine. On this more cor more scorable of the two nines, for sure. Emi Pantsari leading at seven under. A scorching hot front nine. After that, a lot of players at five, a lot of players at four. So Mira Ryhänen, the champion from the last weekend. 5 under also Pyry Joutsen, Kasperi Pakarinen and Oskari Wikström. A lot of players looking to make a move on this, I would say, attackable yet very difficult back nine. Starting on hole 10, already a very difficult hole. A difficult hole to park, specifically. It shapes as a straight to overstable forehand. You need to hit this gap under these low ceiling branches hopefully with an overstable disc on a forehand and take a huge fade to the right ideally even a bit of a skip at the end on this hole it's pretty easy to hit the main gap but very difficult to move far enough right to reach the green we see here Teemu Lampainen off the tee gonna get us started on this back nine had some incredible throwing in the front nine just a few struggles on the green, keeping him from being super hot. We see him shaping a soft flex forehand, and he gets under that low ceiling beautifully. Really utilizing the whole width of the fairway. He is up there and looks to be in the circle for a birdie putt. Really nicely done. Yeah, that's an incredible shot. Might be the first person I've ever seen in circle one on this one. Vaina here looking to follow with that forehand. Going a little bit higher here, contending with the high branches, but he gets through. But you can see the height there, not really allowing him to have all that distance to the basket. Gonna be in circle two, which is a very common landing zone on this one. A lot of people landing in circle two and trying to take their pretty safe putts on this very flat green. And Mikael, known to be a strong forehand player, Unfortunately, low out of the hand, catches an early skip, reducing his speed significantly as he battles just to the beginning of the bend to the right. He will be playing for par now. Nicholas. Looks like he has the height just right. Does he find the full fade? Oh, he does, and he shapes that fairway to perfection, I think, just as the course designer intended. Amazing shots from both Nicholas and Temu. Mikhail and Vino in slightly more difficult positions. Vino may have snuck through for an open putt, though. We'll see how much he's left with, but Mikhail up first with a little bit of a scramble here. He's normally very good with these touch forehands. Looks like he's in the circle now, a little bit short there. Going to be a pretty simple par. And Vino, as I said, the green is very flat, the grass is very lush. Not a lot of skips and rollaways on this one, so pretty safe putt to run. And even with air bowling to putt, still only 6 meters away there. But Niklas and Tem with great drives. Niklas here first. Very good birdie, catching on the high left side. And from a player that is not particularly known for his long forehands. Very impressive stuff from Niklas there. He is known, however, for his angle control, and we see that translate to the forehand beautifully 
as he gets through cleanly and secures the two. We see Vino now here for his three. And, and he Vino. catches high right side. A lot of speed on that putt, Elias. Yeah, I believe Vino very comfortable with this prodigy baskets as they have thick chains in the middle of the pole. Not a lot of center speed outs on these baskets. But Vino, they're just missing and he's not quite on today. Very surprising play from him. Gonna drop down to even par. And at the same time, Niklas at four under and Temu here to also go four under for the great birdie. As we see, Mikael for his par, just a short putt. Very casual putting style. Fino tapping out his bogey. So we see two birdies, a par and a bogey on hole 10, which averaged just over par. 73% of the field taking a three on that. So speaks to just how incredible those two birdies were. Yep. And moving on to another super difficult birdie. This time 120 meters, so similar distance, but playing much shorter. It's going way downhill, probably playing closer to 80 meters. It's very difficult to find the perfect shot on this one, but if you have it, the best shot for this hole is very slowly thrown, not with a lot of speed. You have to throw your disc on an Anheuser out of the hand with a backhand, hopefully with a stable disc that holds the Anheuser for a good time, then at the very end fades just slightly back. It looks like that is what Temu is trying to do here, going very inside with the turnover. Not quite getting that fade back, but he's had a very good result there. Not many people inside the circle on this one. And Niklas looking to once again be shaping a forehand shot here. More natural with that left to right movement. And he's cut a little bit of an inside angle here. Navigating through all of those trees. Fading out a touch early, he will be in circle two, left with a putt of his own. Looking like he hit many sequential, extremely small gaps between all the trees. Yeah, still a pretty good result. With a forehand, you can't really expect to be inside the circle. You're playing for that circle too. If you're going forehand, as we see, Mikael pulling it to the first tree on the right. The gap of the tree, or of the tee, excuse me, is not very big. Only about three meters across. And Vaino here. It's a very good shot for Vaino, I think. And the angle's looking perfect. Despite catching a tree, he looks to have skipped forwards off that and snuck his way to about circle's edge. The nicest shape for our feature card. I think the easiest chance at birdie for Vaino we see... Mikael with a lot of distance left and a fortunate tree to stop him from fading further away from the basket keeps him center at about 13 or 14 meters. We see this putt for par. Wow, what a putt. That is what we expect from him as he's one of the better putters you're going to see even with that soft stroke. Super good distance control. And uh, still kind of saving his score. Mikael is at plus one, which is certainly not a score you're happy with at this point or at any point during the round. But he still has seven holes to make some birdies. Although the end of the course is not going to be easy, every hole is still birdieable. But Temu here from outside the circle for the birdie. Oh, and he snags it, spinning around the bottom of the cage. He's put together two in a row on this back nine, looking really well put together in his game. All functioning nicely, synergistically. He's making the drives and executing the putts now. We see Niklas with his chance for the two. Also from outside of the circle, not quite able to get it. And Temu there, gonna take the lead of the group. 
Vanna here though, still has a chance for a birdie. He's going down a hill here, so this putt probably playing closer to 9 meters. As he has bounced out from the left side. That's pretty rare to see discs bouncing out, especially with the prodigy baskets, as the cage is pretty deep. As we see both Vino and Niklas there now with some short putts, joining Mikhail, taking the three on hole 11, Temu with the lone birdie of our feature card, and taking the lead here at five under on the card. And moving on to another one of these wooded, tricky holes. This time a little bit shorter at 97 meters, playing a little bit uphill towards the end of the flight. This hole asks for either this inside hyzer that the drone is flying with a slightly understable disc trying to flip it up from a big hyzer angle to a little bit less of a hyzer angle and glide yourself forward. Or we see many players also going with a more overstable disc Kind of going for a backdoor route, trying to push the long side of the fairway and only fade at the very end. I believe the backdoor is actually more popular amongst the competitors. Interesting to see what these players go for. Temu with a great speed and hyzer angle. We see him push that the whole way up and hitting the base rock of the pin absolutely parked as he's looking to string together three in a row on this back nine really looking confident now we see Niklas just pushing it a little bit too straight yep both Temu and Niklas going for that backdoor route but compared to Temu's perfect execution of the shot Niklas even pushing it too far straight so it's a very small gap and you can see Mikael, as a local, also being very aware of that backdoor route, and he has thrown it to perfection on the edge of the bullseye there. Perfect shot. And we saw from both Temu and Mikael quite a significant height on the shot, that nose-up angle contributing to an earlier fade, whereas Nicholas says was just a little bit lower with the nose angle, pushing forwards for a touch longer, we see Vino here also with a lower nose angle, but a very overstable disc gets a beautiful skip towards the basket as we see three of our players just within or near Bullseye. Some great shots, only Niklas with some work left to do. Yeah, three pretty impressive shots. It's a very tight window that you have to hit, especially with that backdoor route. And Niklas still going to be the furthest one out after two. This is an important putt for the rest of the round. Not wanting to take a bogey and give potentially two strokes to Temu at this point. Really nice from just within the circle. Had that elevated basket also slightly uphill from his lie. As you mentioned, a critical moment for his round. Taking that par, we see a good birdie from Vino there and likely for Mikael and Temu as well. Just formality on the tap-ins. Hole 12 averaging a 2.92 with a quarter of the field securing the birdie, showing that it is attackable if you hit the tee, the shot off the tee just right. And we see that there with only Niklas taking the lone par. And we're gonna take a pretty steep walk up the hill to this hole 13. One of the most difficult birdies on the course, 151 meters. You have this gap at about two thirds of the fairway or two thirds down the fairway that you have to fly straight through. And after that, take a left finish towards this downhill sloping green, and even a bit of an elevated pin position with that small mound around the basket. The best shot here is a hyzer that flips up to almost flat and then fades towards the basket, but it's an almost impossible hole to park. A lot of shots tend to be fading too far left after the gap.
As we saw, Temu's disc looking like it was fighting over the initial trees, but from that catch cam angle, not quite comp completing its flight towards the green. Still some work left to do. Mikhail just low on this one and too far to the right, catches a branch. He'll be left with, I think, just a short approach. Neither of those guys able to hit the line quite right. But Vaino here, better line, but this is also pushing a bit too straight. Going around the outside of the fairway. And possibly with a good roll, he could get almost to circle one. You can see the disc is rolling, but hard to tell where it ended up. I believe he is going to be within putting distance, but it's a tough putt with that elevated basket position with that mount. And Niklas throwing a very good looking shape, but just inside to the left. And that is going to be a difficult approach to this green. Yeah, nasty kick. And Teemu did actually get caught up in those first bunch of trees, which... He looked to try and go just over as he brings his approach in. Heiser's out early and even gets some more significant ground play down the hill and to the left as he just continues getting more and more distance from the pin. Quite unfortunate for him and will leave him with a long putt. A very difficult par save. Mikhail with a good touch forehand. You mentioned in the front nine, Elias, that he has a great command with both the power forehand and the touch there. Well displayed for Mikael on that downhill slope. Yep, and very good angle control compared to Temus. It's very difficult to keep that disc going straight down the hill. And Niklas, I believe, almost fortunate to be on the left side and having an open hyzer look. Since he's able to play the hyzer down with the hill actually helping him. And Temu here with that difficult basket position, is going to only lay up and take his bogey. And Vaino here, for the birdie, or was that for the birdie or for the par? I'm not quite sure. I believe that was Vaino's two there. Incredible stuff off the drive, got the ground play and then managing to secure that. This is Niklas for his par now. And he finds that beautifully. On hole 13, only 6% of the field able to find the birdie. And we see just that from Vaino Mekela. Beautiful execution on hole 13. This is Mikhail for his par. Yeah, pretty average score for the group here. Although the birdie from Vaino is, as you said, very rare. But pretty commonly we see at least one bogey on the group. It's one of the more difficult holes on the course. And we're moving on to hole 14 to start this final five hole stretch on the course. Very difficult holes, all filled with OB. Starting on this hole 14. Huge par four with the OB lining the left and the right side of the fairway, right side OB on the right side of those trees. Important to stay on the fairway. You need to push the right tree line on your drive to stay in bounds. Easy to fade towards the left OB and from the perfect drive that is about 130 to 140 meters down the fairway you're gonna have a left to right moving approach which most players choose to take a forehand on. Also some backhand turnovers to be seen but the drive real really important just to stay in bounds and uh, hopefully don't skip too far left. Fino with some nice control. We see Mikael now has battled his way back to even for the round. Looking to find some more birdies on this difficult back nine. Does not look too pleased with that shot out of the hand and you can see why there. 
almost staying in bounds, but not quite with that big flare off the dry ground and the short roll on the grass. Will find himself OB left. Very overstable disc from him there. We see Nicholas now. Nicholas here with more of a flip up shot, which is ideal to hopefully remove some of that skip. And even that is skipping pretty far to the left. There's a bit of a downhill slope on this drive. So probably adding a couple of meters on each skip that you're getting towards the left. Pretty rare do you see players pushing that right side wood line as much as you would like. But Tamu is actually doing it pretty well. You can see he's right in the middle there. Right next to Niklas I believe. And you can see the red prodigy sign that is or the black and red sign that means 100 meters to the basket. So both Temu and Niklas biting off most of the fairway there. Mikhail from the early OB shaping a forehand hyzer into the green comes up just a little bit short nestled by that tree, but very much within putting distances that will give him a par save opportunity. Vino looking for the same line. Hopefully getting some late ground play here and a bit of a counter skip actually. Sends him straight and long rather than to the right, but also well within the circle and puts him right up there for his birdie. You'll see Nicholas yeah. now try, try to get a bit closer. This is not a very long forehand from here, just under 100 meters. And Nicholas there doing pretty good work of it. Not quite getting that finish to the right, but he's going to be inside the edge of the circle. And Temu, known for his accurate forehands, playing it pretty wide, hoping for some big skips towards the basket, but does not really get them. So he's going to have a long putt from circle two. And this is towards OB as well. The OB is only about five meters behind the basket from this angle. And he gives it a bit just off the cage and even rolls towards OB. Although I think curling up in time, we saw some very interesting ground play from all of those forehand approaches. Perhaps the very soft downward sloping green contributing and Mikael, solid par save. Finding the early OB, does it in three throws with one penalty. Not too much damage there for him. Nicholas now with his chance for the birdie. Very nice birdie. And Nicholas once again showing off that forehand that we already saw at the start of this back nine. He's only thrown some pretty good forehands so far. So good on him and Vaino also getting that easy looking birdie. They both made pretty easy work of this hole that is not particularly easy. Tell me about the scoring average on this one, Connor. Yeah, hole 14, known to be on the more difficult back nine, was actually averaging 4.21, so just over par as we see some great performances from our feature card. And moving on to a par 5, pretty short par 5, 227 meters starting off in the open. You want your drive to fade before these birch trees on the right side that we just flew past, hopefully landing around here. And then off the perfect shot, the perfect tee shot, your second shot is kind of this scrambly forehand through some of those tiny gaps in the trees, in the trees, excuse me trying to make your way up towards that 50 meter sign and the end of the fairway is just super tight over tunnel many players even choosing to go just straight up through the trees because it's so tight down the fairway the first shot is really a setup here second shot is where most of the money is made and we see Vino has put together three birdies in a row now Looking to have found some nice momentum. Niklas here with a more pushing, understable straight shot than Vino's, but also equally as well placed. As you mentioned, both of them just setting up the second shot. Mikhail now. Pushing the right side tree line more. This is a little bit scary with that right side OB, but he has got a pretty fortunate kick there not to go OB. 
It's difficult to get a lot of distance off this tee as you have those early branches on the left side forcing you to go more towards the right side trees. And Temu actually splitting the trees, getting a good break and a clean flight. He's not gonna have too far to the next set of gaps along the line of the woods. So making that second shot much easier for him. But for example, Mikai here will have to just aim at one of those trees and hope to miss. And all he can do is hope, but unfortunately his disc finding one of them. We see Vino now more to the left side, has slightly wider gaps, but has a similar result there. Just a little bit of a poke and pray situation. Of course you can aim at a gap, pick the largest one, manage the height, but with so many obstacles in the way, you really need to pure your line. Niklas as well catching a tree, but a more fortunate kick forwards up the fairway will have slightly better progress than the other two. And Temu, who got aggressive off the tee shot, has an opportunity to get a lot of distance now. But he too pushes that backside tree line and finds something. Very understandable result from all of them. Yeah, it's just a very tough hole towards the end. You can say Mika, you can see Mikael here pushing his way up towards the basket, but it's sloping so far uphill at the end that it's almost difficult or almost impossible to reach from these positions as Vaino has also come up short and Niklas will have to craft a flex Anheuser shot from here. Very technical, very difficult. And also a little bit short on the right side compared to the others short on the left. But most certainly putting for Niklas. Looks to have worked his way quite far up the hill. Temu from a pretty ideal position, unable to get through that last gap towards the green. As we'll see what our competitors are left with. Vino looking to shape the Anheuser forehand, even looking to put it in that slope, allowing a little bit more of an attacking line, even with the forehand putt. Mikhail has a chance as well, just a little bit shy and left. Yep, it's a very safe green to run the pots on. Demo here for the birdie. And he gets it. What a great putt. After a couple of, or at least on the last hole, missing putt from similar distance. Let's have another look at that. He's going at least two to three meters uphill, even on this 14 meter putt and able to drop it in on the left side. What a great make there. Niklas looking to match that. From circle two as well with a wide straddle finds the heart for the birdie. Niklas Antila with an incredible putt there as well. Matching Temu from circle two as both of them secure the birdies. We'll get a look at that putt as well. You see the wide straddle to open up the putting stroke. Gives it just the smallest amount of Anheuser here as it flattens out and finds the chains. Gets the fist bump from Niklas. Yeah, pretty well managed by the card here. Nobody taking a bogey and even two birdies by both Temu and Niklas. It's a tough hole. And it's not particularly difficult as far as scoring, but just a very scrambly end to the hole. But we're and I'd like to, to give another. a very quick shout out before you go to hole 16, Elias. Worth mentioning, there was one eagle on hole 15. Shout out to Daniel Davidson, who found the three on that hole. That's incredible. Yeah, very good three. And I believe he had a long circle two look, which he made. On the hole 16, no eagles going to be on this one, though, as it is a long par four. Long and an open par four. Only difficulty on this one being the OB. You're throwing a big hyzer off the tee, which is going to set you up for a forehand approach. Important to say inbounds off the tee, and if you're going OB, go OB to the left side, so that you get to progress far down the fairway. Niklas has done his tee shot just perfectly there. Timo playing the high and wide hyzer as well, positions himself nicely towards that left side. Not too much distance needed here. And a very wide shot from Vaino here. 
pretty safe line, not going for a whole lot of distance. But also showing off some good arm speed, even with such a steep hyzer, able to pass the 100 meter sign. So that was a good 130 meter high hyzer. And Mikael with not as much width playing the similar hyzer line. As a result, finds OB by what looked to be less than one meter, just sneaking over that line. An unfortunate result for him. But as you mentioned, it is the side to make the error on. Par still very much in play for Mikael. We see Temu with the power forehand hyzer gets his way to within the circle and very nicely done. Just center cut down the fairway twice. Gives himself a birdie putt. This is Mikael's chance to put himself close and try to save par once again. And he's going to have a look, but not from close distance, well outside the circle there. And we're going to see another forehand from Niklas Antila here. Showing off that clean release. And as you mentioned earlier in this back nine, very good angle control. Once again, he's going to be parked. And he's going to go to seven under. Both Niklas and Tim are shooting pretty hot rounds here. Yeah, the man knows his angles and he knows his discs. That's for sure. We see a similarly fine upshot from Vino there just outside bullseye really smooth approaches I, th I believe Mikhail with the longest of the four putts coming up now this is for par certainly going to give this a good run and actually catches a mean roll off the back I believe just able to stay in bounds straddling the OB line will get his meter off it towards the basket but with a putt backwards some frustration from him as he had just fought his way back to even, will once again find himself over par for the round. Solid birdie from Temu. Very solid. It's not a super difficult birdie, but there's just a lot of things that can go wrong on this one. With all of that OB, mostly everybody on the group, besides Mikael, able to stay clear of those troubles. And you can see the huge scoring separation looks like Mikael did actually go OB with the putt as he has tapped in for a 7 as everybody else on the card taking 3s. That can hurt towards the end of your round but certainly looking to close out strong regardless. Yep and uh, it's gonna be another forehand hole coming up here. Hole 17, 115 meters plays very well for a low driven driver forehand you want to fly straight through this gap that is about 90 meters from the tee and directly after that gap you want to have a strong right finish usually with a bit of a skip towards the right at the end if you throw a great forehand it's another hole that is pretty difficult to park the basket is quite far to the right most of the best drives on this one landing between 5 and 10 meters, still inside the circle. Niklas shaping a soft flex through that tunnel, getting a nice finish to the right around the corner. Once again showing off his use of the forehand here. Temu, known to be quite a strong forehand player. Looking to match that, goes for a very different line than Niklas and unfortunately with the hyzer release does not flip it up to flat and looks to have found that OB on the right side. Spotter gives him the green flag, he snuck over it and is safe. A great break. Yeah, that's a huge break. Almost never do you see somebody go completely through that OB line and over. You can see Vanner here pushing the left side with a forehand. Gonna have a long bit, not the ideal shot, but definitely makeable from there. And Mikael, despite his late struggles on the back nine, this is a very suitable hole for him. And that is a good looking line, taking a decent skip and he's gonna be on the edge of the circle. Gonna be a tester for where his head is at after that triple bogey. Temu trying to translate his lucky break into the birdie. Doesn't quite find it there, but gives it the chance for sure. We see Vino, his chance at the two. 
as he sails just to the right side from pretty deep circle to quite an ambitious putt, but of course he's going for it. And Mikhail with the bounce back. You mentioned that that's a signal of where his head's at. He's thinking of birdies. Even late in the round, he's going to do everything he can to battle back. And to be expected, he's a great player. The, one of the better local players here. And look at that strong putt from Niklas. Stabs it in to the low left side. And he's going to move to 8 under par for the round. A pretty incredible pace. We mentioned in the front nine, Nicholas in the press conference mentioned anything even close to 10 under would be the sign of a great round. And he is uh, right up near those double digits with only one hole left to go. At eight under, he's put together a very solid performance. What do we have here, Elias? Yeah, what a finishing hole it is. Hole 18. It's another one of these distance tests that we had a couple of on the front nine. Hole 18, 140 meters, even going slightly uphill towards the end. There's this OB on the left side that kind of tails off when you get pin high. Also the OB on the right. Both OBs not really coming into play if you're flying over the fairway. But if you turn your shot over or hyzer way early as you're trying to go for that big for most players, a big flex shot to get all of that distance. It's pretty easy to find that OB, and this is pretty much the maximum distance for a lot of the players in the field. Niklas once again utilizing some under stability to not only push the distance but shape naturally through the fairway. I think a fortunate branch is that kind of slowed him down and caused him to fade earlier than he otherwise would have. Looked to have been turning very aggressively, even when it connected with that, so... But a good position for him, and we see Mikael now trying to work his way up there. Will be just underneath that tree, outside circle two. A short upshot, likely playing that one for par. Yep, and uh, on this one there was a slight tailwind. So helping some of that distance, especially going with an understable disc... This is a beautiful looking line from Temu with that slight Anheuser release. And he's gonna be inside the circle to go 8 under on the round. Possibly to match Niklas, because Niklas is pretty far away. Likely an unmakeable putt. Yeah, an incredible shot from Temu. Great use of the tailwind and angle control there. Vino unfortunately getting this one turned over early with no hopes of fading back in time. Finds OB to the right side and will have a very long chance for a par, although on this elevated basket may just have to lay up for the bogey at that distance. I think quite a risky move to try and put it in. And you see just that from him laying it up. He will be ending his round at three under, still very respectable score. That will put him in contention for round two. Mikhail having to do the same. Yep, Mikael with a bit of an bit of a disappointing round. Let's see if Niklas can actually make this to end the round on a high note. And what a great run it was. Settles just a couple of meters from the basket. And here is Temu to match Niklas's 8 under. And he does. What a great performance from a player that often performs at his best at this Finnish Nationals. As we mentioned on the front nine, Temu was second last year. And we see Niklas just tapping out to complete his eight under round. As we see a solid performance by Niklas Antila and Temu Lampainen. You touched on the fact that Mikael had some difficult moments, but overall also had some great shots and great putts. So really showed that he has the skills, just needs to put it all together. Yep, and look at this top 10 list. Both of the top two players, Niklas and Temu from our card, shooting that hot 8 under round. As predicted, 10 under is going to be an incredible score, and 8 under being the hot round today. But also right behind those two, Ville Ahogas and last weekend's champion from Åland, Mira Ryhänen at 7 under. All round pretty tight battle as you would expect from the Finnish Nationals. 
and some incredible throws and some incredible coverage for you here on MDG Media. If you would like to support us, you can like, comment and subscribe or go check us out on Patreon. Your support is incredibly appreciated and contributes directly to this coverage which we are able to bring you. Thank you for joining us for round one. Elias, thank you for joining me on commentary and we are excited to have you join us once again in round two.